بسم اللہ اکمان رہی میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان گڈ ٹو سی آل آف یو اگین ویل لیڈیز اینڈ جنرمن ان دا پاس سیشنز وی آر بیسکلی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا ڈفرنٹ ایشوز ان کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ان دوز ایشوز وی لکڈ ایٹ دا رول آف دی بورڈ اٹس سپرا کانٹیکسٹ اینڈ دین اٹس ٹرائنگولر ریلیشن شپ ود دی شیئر ہولڈرز اینڈ دی ٹاپ مینجمنٹ اینڈ ہاؤ دا بورڈ کین ورک افیکٹولی ہاؤ اٹ کین ہیو ڈفرنٹ کمیٹیز ہاؤ اٹ پلیز اٹس رول as uh, a supra body of accountability, transparency, integrity and ethics and how it can ensure optimization of profits without encroaching upon any stakeholder. And the most important thing, ladies and gentlemen, uh, or the question which tends to arise is, is that why should we even have corporate governance? If corporate governance is so complex and complicated, we have to follow so many regulations, we have to undertake so many responsibilities and we have so many different expenses related to corporate governance, then why practice it at all? Why can't we all just indulge in optimization of profits, maximization of profits and earn as much as we can, have a cutthroat competition and um, ensure that the management extricates the maximum from its stakeholders and gives the maximum benefit to its shareholders. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are many examples in history, in corporate history, where we have seen that where there has been bad corporate governance, it has led to the devastation or the demise of very large organizations, of very well-established organizations. And with the demise of those organizations, it had a trickle effect. It had a ripple effect. And sometimes it even had a domino effect in which then the whole market would be adversely affected. So for the betterment uh, of the majority, it is very important that corporate governance is practiced in its true essence in any organization. Now, we are just going to be looking at one example, and that example is very famous, which was the US stock market bubble, which basically led to the wipeout of 46% of market capitalization uh, of the uh, US share market. And that tent amounted to nearly, uh, nearly 7,500 uh, billion dollars being wiped out and as a consequence of that numerous companies were were totally uh, annihilated or were totally vanquished and many suffered so much of financial loss that it took them years and in some cases decades to revive and therefore we see that even the effects of that bubble burst to this day there are some reminiscences and we can see those different adverse effects now when we look at this, we see basically, ladies and gentlemen, that in the period 2000 to 2002, the New York market suffered the biggest stock market crash in US history. And in that, it had a peak 15,000 billion market capitalization, and it fell by more than 7,000 billion, which tent amounts to 46%. And nearly half of the investment was lost by the different market uh, shareholders. Leading corporations uh, at the head of the economy lost more than half their market value, which also included Microsoft, Cisco, and Intel. And even established corporations like General Electric and Pfizer lost 40% of their market capitalization. So just like I was mentioning, it was a total disaster. It, it had this effect not only on the US economy, it had a global effect on all economies, on all stock exchanges. Everything plummeted. There were different percentages according to which the different markets responded to this bubble burst and it had many negative connotations which continued for many years and in some instances for more than a decade. So again, we see that where there is no good corporate governance, then scenarios like this basically are created. And when we are talking about the mistakes which are done, then again we see that it is very important that there have to be correct and appropriate evaluations and valuations of stock so that there is no manipulation, there is no exploitation and there is no corruption or corrupt practices taking place within an organization which would exploit the shareholders or the different uh, bond markets in which there would be different players uh, who would be buying and selling different shares of the organization and that itself becomes very important that they are not window dressed and they are not enhanced to such a level which could lead to negative consequences for the small investors 
of any particular market. And that is what we saw basically in this bubble burst. Now, the crisis shows that valuation of the stock market is an important national and indeed an international issue. So, just like I was mentioning, it was not confined to the US stock market. It actually had negative ramifications for all the stock markets around the world. And that is why corporate governance becomes so important. And we basically see that this economic disaster was manipulated by a few corporate executives, by some investment banks, and by some uh, market analysts. So, corporate governance basically ensures that this does not happen, and there is a level playing field, and the uh, principles of integrity and ethics uh, and accountability and transparency are upheld in the highest context of, uh, of practice and essence, and also ensured within the, uh, within the uh, different corporations and the different markets altogether. Now, what we see is that out of those different debacles which took place, the most famous is the Enron case. Now, at the time of Enron's collapse in December 2001, it was a nearly $100 billion organization with 20,000 employees around the world. And what Enron basically did was that it began developing off balance sheet entities to conceal debt and inflate earnings. And what happened was that when this was unraveled in a financial audit by the Securities Exchange Commission, then the total estimated loss was of more than $74 billion. And it had a huge adverse impact on the whole market. Uh, we see that in conjunction with this, Enron not only inflated or window dressed its own accounts, but also supported other organizations. And that included the merger between WorldCom and MCI. And uh, we basically see that this was a $37 billion merger. And in that, there was an exaggeration by WorldCom of its internet traffic, of capitalizing operating expenses, and also of the fact that uh, it was showing inflated earnings. And that also led in 2002 to a 3.8 billion fraud, which was uncovered by the SEC, and WorldCom had to file for bankruptcy. By the end of 2002, what we see is, is that uh, there was a 9 billion uh, error in reporting, and there was false reporting of expenses and company loans made to executives, which was devastating for WorldCom and also for the general shareholding market, uh, not only in the United States of America, but also around the world. And it is also estimated that Enron overstated their assets by $11 billion. So all of this amalgamated into the burst of the American stock market, which had ramifications across the world. And thousands of billions of dollars was written off. And many hundreds of organizations uh, went bankrupt. And many established organizations lost their market capitalization. And there was this chaos throughout the world. Why? Because of bad corporate governance, because of weak regulatory controls, and because of mischievous corporate executives who wanted to manipulate the market. Therefore, corporate governance is critical for the healthy competition at a national and at an international level. Thank you so much.